Okay, I got the recording going. <laughs> you say it was 7B, Peter? Yeah. Yeah. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome uh, to um, our meeting regarding self storage facilities. Um, today's date, June 27, 2020. Um, according to the governor's executive order 7B, this meeting will be recorded um, uh, and available to the public. Um, hi, everyone. How you doing? Good. Hello. Um, does everybody have, everybody have a copy of um, the document that Pete put together? Yeah. Great. Um, Pete, um, I, you know, I went through it a couple of times. A lot of this we've seen before, which is great. All good information. Um, what I wanted to do, Peter, is to get some direction from you. Uh, one, from a timeline perspective, I know that the moratorium is in place until September 4th. Um, does this mean that we need to be in front of P&Z before September 4th? Would that be the August meeting that we'd have to be ready? So the, the um, worst case scenario, given the, the timeline for the moratorium would be the September 1, PNZ meeting. Okay, September and 1. So that would be the, um, assuming they hear it and vote on it and do something that night, that would uh, get the, um, get it in under the, uh, under the wire, so to speak. Um, in order to do that, um, we have a statutory requirement that we file the change to the regulations uh, 35 days before that date. So that would put us, just to give us a little wiggle room, um, by July 24th, getting a final uh, set of regulations uh, filed with the with the commission. Yeah. And would they would be would we participate in the August meeting then? Um, once the application is filed, there is no. Um, conversation to be had with the planning and zoning commission per, per the you know we don't want to have them uh, be accused of predetermining anything so once the application is filed the really uh, the only opportunity you would have is the September uh, 1st uh, public hearing if you wanted to have a conversation with them before the document was filed they have a meeting on July 21st <laughs> we could um, you could be, do a, a pre-application or uh, a conversation about the topic uh, with the commission uh, at that meeting if, if we wanted to do that. So that's something to, to think about. What was the date of that meeting again, Peter? That would be July 21. I can also bring forth as a member of PNZ, I could bring forth before the meeting the uh, feelings of various, uh, various folks on this committee. I'd be happy to do that. Okay. Um, so, uh, Pete, I mean, I, the, the, by the way, the document put together here, thank you. The <laughs> images and whatnot have been great. Um, the, um, on, I want to just kind of go through the uh, item and feel free, guys, to stop in. If there's anything on any of these pages that you wanted to add in for, uh, a, a point to, but what I wanted to do is to go through the document uh, as it sits. There's a couple areas that I highlighted I thought would be germane to what we're talking about today. Um, and if you guys can go to page two of the document, um, it talks about the certain zones um, that are available here in town. Um, the, um, the, I was interested, Pete, on the zoning regulation, the amendment that was done in 2005, uh, that storage bays were not permitted at one point and they were by special permit now. Um, I want to kind of just go and negate, bless you, I wanted to kind of go and negate some of these things. Further in the document, if we decide to, you know, whatever we decide to, as a group to move on to, um, the, the architecture and the design of it is part of what we're looking to address in a potential amendment um, to this item. And I just wanted to make sure that everybody was aware that a big part of this is that what I'm looking to hope to accomplish is to get enough teeth that if we do decide to lift the moratorium and, and allow um, storage facilities that one, Peter, that we could have site direction, and I don't know if that's the proper terminology um, um, on an item like this, but obviously if we approved 
um, sites here, we'd like to be able to have as part of our direction where it would be located on the property. And I think we're all pretty much in favor that if what this was to go forward, that it would need to be part of a, a well-designed uh, site where the storage facility would be back on a thousand and there could be additional uses in front. Is that something that we have leeway to be able to establish as part of this, that we want to be able to have it, um, that we can direct where would it would be located on the site? Um, yeah, that, that starts to get into um, areas that typically, you know, you, you don't see um, in, a, in a zoning regulation, or at least I haven't seen that level of detail. Um, You might address that by by talking about um, you know how much of it can be seen from the street and things like that, but even that starts to get into areas um, that I'm not you know I, I don't have a great deal of experience seeing those kind of regulations. So okay. um, that that starts to get a little bit a feel sometimes. Yep. Well, one of the things that I'm, I'm, I don't want to see happen is that if we decide to um, allow this, that they're able to put on the site and get away from that, the concept that we have of moving it towards the back. Um, so if you think, Dan, what are your thoughts on this? I don't, I don't, I don't know how much you can talk about or not talk about as, as a member of PNZ, but um, what are your thoughts there? Well, I'm, you know, in all fairness, at the time we had a disagreement at the last meeting uh, over <clears throat> this particular position. Uh, I'm very much in favor of being able to have a self storage in the rear of the property with uh, retail in the front. <coughs> We've just seen some photos of very nice looking properties. And if there's a thought of you want to keep the Silestine Highway looking well, this may be the best way to have it developed. There may be a difference of opinion. And I think before we go forward, we ought to have a vote among ourselves what we want to do. Uh, agreed. Um, but Peter, you're saying based on what we're looking for and getting it towards the rear of the property, there hasn't there isn't any precedent out there that you can point to? Uh, it's not something I'm I'm familiar. I can certainly, um, as I say, we still have a couple of weeks. Uh, I can do some research and see. If, if there is some language that might um, give us, you know, um, some provisions in a draft regulation that could. But then again, you don't want to also, you know, nail it down so tightly that if if they proposed, you know, a part of it on the side and it could still work with the other, you know, potential uses of the site. You know, you don't want to, you know, lock it down so detailed that it might not make sense. Um, in a situation where you, it might not be such a bad idea. So, so I, can certainly, I can certainly look into, uh, you know, provisions that, you know, kind of require uh, things like that to be uh, kind of screened or in the back or whatever, or whatever language might seem to work. Um, is there a way that we can, we can find, that we can say that, you know, as part of the design review and everything else that we have site approval? I mean, if, is, would that be encompassing enough for us to be able to say, no, we think this is too close or we prefer to see this farther back? Is that where we could get leeway? Well, PNZ is ultimately going to have the site approval anyway uh, versus using the special permit process. But if there is a, a specific intent to only allow these so that <laughs> it's you know, not a dip, dominant visual element on the property or something like that, um, then you know we should talk about that, not just leave it to uh, to chance. Um, but what I'm saying is, it, there might be a design that it could be on the front and visible on the side, and it also leaves room for the you know the uh, remaining development of the site in it also in a tasteful way. So um, I'm just throwing that out there as it may not be what you ultimate you know that may not be the solution for any particular site. Okay. So it's, it's Paul. I think if I read back what I think the concern here is, is we just want to have a level of input and I'll put quotes around control of the design and aesthetic from the street than normally a project like this might 
might might have. I think for lack, just given its visibility, its size and scale. Yes, I would say so. Yep, yeah, I agree with that. Um, very good. So if you guys want to skim through, I think the, the I would like to go to the pictures section with you. And if you, I think the pictures started on page six. Um, and I guess, you know, a lot of these um, things, they're, they're one big pads. So the idea of, of some type of mixed use or retail or residential in the front, if you look at these pictures that, that Peter's taken, um, you, you see that a lot of them are designed um, with both. I mean, the second one, Ridgefield, uh, 35 Old Quarry Road, uh, which is on page seven, that includes 16 apartments. Um, into that facility, and that looks like it's just one pad. Is that right, Peter? That was one big, one big space. Yeah, it's um. There's a, look, you can see from the, the picture. There's a little bit of parking in the front, uh, but it's one big long thin site. To the right of the image is a lower uh, driveway and parking down below. So it's a three le It's a three. Le it's actually a four level, depending on how you count the levels. Uh, there's a le level below. That you can't see behind this fence uh, with a slope that goes down. So, but okay. it's one uh, one building. Um, if you go to the next page or go to page eight, the only thing I don't like there it's called the lockup. That doesn't really um, intimate fun and warm and fuzzies to me. Maybe to you, Pentalo, you might like that. But um, uh, again, one big site. So if you go on to the pros and the uh, go on to page nine. Um, what I did find interesting, one, two, three, four, five down, is that based on the data that you got here, Pete, that 67% of self-storage renters live in single-family homes. And, you know, Weathersfield is a zillion single-family homes. So one of the points I think in talking with Joya, um, um, you know, a week or so ago is that if we move in the direction of permitting this use, we do want to make sure that this is going to be a viable project and that it doesn't sit vacant. Um, based on the conversations that we've seen and, and, uh, and heard from developers that are interested, they still have a lot of interest and think that it is very viable um, in that area. Um, if you can yeah, think, again, I, I know I'm jumping around a little bit, but if you look at the um, appraised value, um, it wasn't on Ridge, the 35 old quarry, that just, that's just being built, Peter. Is that why there isn't an assessed value there? No, I spent, um, I, the Ridgefield, the town of Ridgefield's website is just for, uh, for an affluent community is just awful. Um, I couldn't access any assessor's information. I couldn't access their GIS system. So I couldn't, um, I couldn't access this information. Um, so it's gotta be out there somewhere, but I, I could not for the, for the purposes of today. Uh, find that information very easily. So, okay. No, it's it's built. It was finished um, last year. So, um, um, it just wasn't uh, wasn't accessible to me. Got it, Peter. On the facility in Norwalk at 587 Connecticut Avenue, yes, um, it shows the 50, 55 apartments in self storage. Um, is that on two different sites? Because the picture there doesn't look like you, I can see the storage, but where were the apartments located? Was it in a different pad? A different yeah, spot? so when I uh, did the presentation at the last meeting, I gave you some photos of that. It's uh, they both have the same address. Um, so it's two different buildings. Okay. So as you're looking at uh, the self storage, you can see the driveway that goes to the left. That driveway is shared uh, with the access to the apartment, which is just to the left and visually, um, but it's um, it's the same property. Okay. If you guys look at the appraised value there, the apartments are appraised um, uh, at 14 million. The self storage facility is appraised at 11 million. So there's a lot of value there with from a tax from a revenue perspective, which is something we need to be mindful of. Um, the same thing with the 35 old quarry. I think that's a smaller development. Um, uh, there, um, but if you see the assessed values on these, they're pretty significant. Because um, if we do want to go down this road, we do want to make sure that we're getting a significant bang for the buck. Um, if you go and guys continue down to the pros and cons, or uh, which I think start, um, 
Let's see. What page was that, Pete? Pros and cons. Uh, page page 10. 10. 10. Yeah. If yep. you guys will go to page 10. Um, from the, um, it doesn't generate much traffic. I think that is an important consideration. Um, whether you believe that there's a tr the traffic patterns are high or low. Um, I think we have one that we know wouldn't potentially add to a potential issue already. I think that's a good point in, in, in favor um, that it doesn't generate more traffic. Again, whether it's high or low, I don't have the stats there. Um, obviously the second point, they do generate a substantial amount of property taxes. They don't burden the local schools. Um, uh, and what I did like was able to infill underused sites as they have more flexible design requirements require less parking than other land uses. Those are all good points, I think, that support the piece going to, towards the rear of the, um, of the, uh, of the lot. Um, I think the meat in, um, of what you sent here, Pete, is basically the regulatory options um, that we would uh, permit. If you guys want to go to page 11, this is where I really think we should spend our time um, is uh, on this particular area here. Because we do need to, as a group, come to a decision on what we want to move forward because uh, time is ticking. We do have, um, we have had conversations uh, with uh, the owner of the property. Uh, at, at, we're talking the Weight Watchers property at 1000 Celestine. Um, we have had some very casual um, but important conversations with the potential developer for that site that may still have an interest in it. Um, they were, um, um, I would say overall, Pete, would you say positive with the idea with the, with the storage facility in the back? I think that's what I took away from that. Yeah, there seemed to be at least a willingness to uh, entertain uh, mixed use and doing other things on the property. Uh, if, if that worked. Um, I don't know how far they, they got into uh, analyzing the, the cost <laughs> associated with doing something like that, because it would uh, involve demolishing the existing building, which is no small uh, undertaking. But uh, nevertheless, I think there seemed to be a willingness um, that the en entire site didn't have to be dedicated to self-storage. So guys, if we can just read through the regulatory options that we have here. One, no action, keep the previously enacted regulations in place and regulate as a special permit use uh, in the RC and BP zones. Um, that's zoned RC now, is that correct, Peter? Yes. Um, uh, BP would be like Putnam Park and whatnot. Um, yes. Would that be, that doesn't fall into the BP zone now, that particular area, is that right? Uh, right now, um, the BP zone let me just check my notes here. Um, does permit, does permit them right now. Okay. Yep. Um, item two, keep the previously enacted regulations in place and regulate as site plan permitted um, in the uh, RCA and BP zones. Prohibit the use, eliminate the use from the list of permitted uses in the zoning table. Existing facilities therefore become non-conforming uses. BP zone only, um, RC zone only. Other zones, um, interior access only, on, only allow this self-storage style. Go into that, Pete, a little bit. That one, I wasn't, um, you're talking that that would have no exterior garage door type. Is that correct? That's correct. So um, the uh, Oleson Road up off the Berlin Turnpike, those are obviously um, exterior access, whereas the facility on the north end of the Silestein Highway is uh, interior. Um, they now have hybrids of both. If you look at the photo of the um, Milford, the lockup, um, and just the lockup, I guess, has a combination of both interior and exterior. So that's, that's why I, I point that out if we wanted to limit it uh, one way or the other. Okay. Um, number nine, continued permit use, uh, but consider adding um, definition, architectural design standards, glazing, distance from existing storage facilities. So again, my, my biggest concern 
is that we don't have a enough teeth peat um, to restrict that on at least at this thousand Celestine Highway that we restrict that the the facility be towards the back of the lot. Um, and you said that's something you could look into um, to see whether or not there's any um, guidelines that we can have for the actual site use or land use. Um, we don't want to get, I guess, too restrictive, but if overall we feel as though that um, that back area really is kind of an unused industrial type area that a storage facility going in the back would make sense. I just need, I don't have the uh, proper um, um, uh, guidance um, um, and I'm, I'm, I'll just call myself naive with regards to what we could specifically ask for that makes sense or not make sense for, um, to get that particular area inserted into the language what we can use to make sure that we can get that um, as part of the option. So I guess whatever we decide to do, how do you guys feel about that? I mean, that's a concern that I have is that if we approve this, the next thing you know, it's right up on, you know, on the, the existing footprint of a thousand Weight Watchers um, that we kind of lose what the momentum that we've kind of put together. Any thoughts on that? You ask that it be mixed use only and, you know, with retail or um, I don't think this landowner is, is interested in doing apartments like some of the other storage facilities, but at least retail in the front. Um, maybe we can give a percentage that if he's going to do storage, it can only be 60% and 40% has to be mixed use. Peter, how does that compare to, you know, legality or um, your interpretation on what's currently out there? So you, you can certainly do a formula or a percentage uh, if you're going to require mixed use. So that's, that's uh, I've seen that and that's pretty defensible. Um, but I like the idea, maybe we reverse it rather than limiting the, the self storage is any mixed use the commercial component has to be on the front, you know, so maybe there's a different way of, of uh, spinning this that I can, I can look into. What I would envision is uh, once we get a consensus today on a direction to go is I will draft something up um, before the 24th when we have to file it and we meet again to go over the language and see if, uh, you know, we've come up with something that we think is, um, you know, going to, going to work for us. So, um, so I can look into both of those um, options and see which maybe is the is the better way to go. I appreciate that. Oh, go ahead. I was I was just going to say, Pete. Um, number nine, continue to predict. If we're going to go that route, I like that we have we're 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 putting in their definition, architectural design standard, window glazing requirements, distance from existing storages. That actually doesn't seem like we're um, just picking on storage areas. That's just saying we decided as a town we wanted a certain way and this is the only way we're going to do it. That way we're not really limited enough coming up with any kind of different regulatory options. We're coming, this is what we want part of our design standard and if they want to do it and, and like Judy said if we put that in that mixed use and that stays there uh, we get what we want they get what they want. That's just my thought. And maybe the mixed use has to be the visible portion from the street. Right, that's the teeth. Yeah, I think there's, there's a, it sounds like there's a, a bunch of musts around this, right? So it, it must have mixed use to retail up front. It, it must be set back from the street. One thing I'm not clear on is um, we we're talking about exterior. Um, is that exterior storage? meaning boats, trailers, things like that, or exterior access within the roll-up doors and what's visible? Roll-up doors um, is, is what that means, Paul, is that the exterior meaning it's like uh, there's like garage doors, like the one up on the Berlin Turnpike Olson, up on Olson yep. Road. And then the, they have the interior ones, which are at the north end, excuse me, yeah, the north end of the Salestine Highway. Those are all internal, right, Peter? I don't think there's any garage doors unless they are in the back. That's no, there, there might be one or two on the on the back. I'm just trying to visualize that. They have an office at the ground level. 
they may not have any, but I'll, I'm, not, I'm not completely certain on that. So, um, but, but the, vis the visible portion of it is clearly does not have, you know, the, do the exterior doors, which I think- There are about six bay doors. There are, okay. Yeah. In the park, Small. around the corner, in the parking lot side? Yep. Okay. Yep. So that and would be also, the, one at, the one at Olson does allow exterior storage, not in something, but you can't see it from the road right. at all. So in other words, somebody could park a boat on the outside of that facility. Oh, that's not really what we're, we're intending, intending here. Um, I would agree with that. I think it's either, um, it's, now I, I can also say this, if it's completely hidden from uh, the front of the highway, it's kind of irrelevant and it becomes a more, more uh, viable project for the developer, I wouldn't have an issue, but I think that would have to be a stipulation that any outside storage can be visible from, uh, mm -hmm. from, the, from the highway. Yeah, well, that's what you Olson. You can't see it at all unless you're back there. Yeah. Well, why do you get a prohibition of no outside storage? I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that it could get carried away, and we do have neighbors behind the building. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good point, Judy. I think these are things in the detail that, that we can certainly discuss, um, but I think it's a good point to, to have. We do need to be mindful um, of the people on the other side of the railroad tracks here, that's for sure. Are there any items, guys, in item A through K uh, that you um, feel should have be omitted um, or added to? Um, you know, Peter, I, you know, I think maybe if L would be something similar to what Judy was mixing, that a percentage of the lot needs to be mixed use, the percentage needs to be storage on that particular um, area. Um, Will that be negotiable? Says, it's, we're not looking to pick on this particular site. It just happens to be a site that there's been a lot of interest from um, from storage uh, companies. Anybody want to add anything to A through K or modify any of those or, or omit any of those? I'm going to have to leave, Mark. Okay. Dan, thank you for coming. Thanks for your time. Okay. Uh, Mark, does uh, the fire department and the police department have any uh, teeth in the game here with restrictions on what can be stored? I mean, can somebody store gasoline in there or no. firearms or? No. Um, the, how, do we how do we determine that? That's all done by the company themselves. There's certain yeah. guidelines that they have to follow, uh, the storage facilities themselves. Um, I store a car up on Olson Road and you know, it's got to be registered and I mean, they, I mean, it's, they're, they, they run a pretty tight ship. So there is like, there is rules and regs that are involved already in that. I don't know if there's anything, Peter, from the town that would be in addition to or supersede any regulations that the facility had itself. Are those state or federally mandated? I wonder, Pete. Um, it's, uh, it's the fire code and the building code that applies here. So I will, um, check with both of those guys to see if they feel there are any additional restrictions that might need to be included in a zoning uh, versus the fire and building codes. Um, last time I talked to the fire marshal, he um, did not indicate that it was that important that we regulate that because they have their own codes um, that regulate that. But I will uh, check in with both of them one more time just to make sure there's not nothing specific that they would want us to add in there. Okay. Mark, when you ask for uh, things to be eliminated, I think you want to take out the one that says pro uh, provide outside storage. I mean, you want to eliminate that for sure, so that way they know that they can't do that. Like what Judy said, putting boats or whatever out there because there's houses in the back. And in the architectural design standards, you know, something in there to make sure that the building is compatible with the surrounding area. So that, as an example, there with the houses in the back, it has to at least in the back end, be looking like, you know, nice apartments or something, you know, so that it's eye pleasing to the people in the back looking like it belongs in a residential zone versus a commercial building. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that's going to be a challenge on the design side, but you're right. We have to be mindful of the neighbors there. Um, Is fencing a possibility and other like tree plantings, et cetera? I just, I hate the idea that you could walk away from a deal because we might not allow boats to be stored in a way that's not really an eyesore for anybody. 
I think if, if the developer is willing to create something, so it's not, I'm just trying to think about closing a deal and is that a deal breaker for people? I'm with you on that, but architectural design actually, just the standard, we create the standard for the town, what we want. So like you said, Brooke, and, and Mark said it perfectly, sometimes it comes down to business. You know, these people are, are have 50 spaces outside that's not seen from, from the highway and they want to rent out car space or if we can, planting trees. So if it's architectural appealing to anybody around, then why not? So I, I would hate to eliminate that because we could lose a deal when they go, well, that's bread and butter, you know? I agree. <coughs> yeah, I think these are things that, um, frankly, I think even if we didn't discuss it as, as well as we are now, my gut tells me that P and Z would probably bring that up themselves and saying, you know, how are these going to be viewed by the, by the people on the other side of the tracks? But um, I think um, um, restricting it might be too much, but I think that does come up underneath the um, design standards. Um, and I also think P and Z would be very, very, I think they would be on top of that as well. Um, you guys agree with that? Yeah, okay. Um, any other additions or omissions to those uh, particular items, A through K? Would we want to combine any of them? Like B and C or H and I into one single statement? The yeah, in the final details, it may be covered as one section or something like that. So uh, okay. I just wanted to make sure we itemized them so we had a conversation about them. In terms of the final language, as I said at the beginning, um, I'll take a stab at it and I'd like you guys to look at, um, you know, a draft language to make sure we cover everything. So I have two questions. Um, one is, uh, is this negotiable when somebody brings a, um, a plan for their building to P and Z? Um, can these be waived or changed in any way? Um, that's why we got to be careful about how the how the final language is is uh, uh, resolved because some of these things cannot just be waived and can't be flexible depending upon the way uh, we write them without maybe having to go to the zoning board of appeals or another group. So um, if we want to give the planning and zoning commission complete flexibility. We can throw that in there, but that's also gets a little, a little dangerous depending upon how uh, it, significant and important we feel some of these provisions are. So, um, so it'll, it, the proof will be in the final language. We just don't want to have regulations in place and then have somebody say, "Oh well, that doesn't apply to me." So go get a variance, and um, I've already been there with <laughs> neighbors. So. The other thing is, the other second question is, does any of this apply to currently existing facilities if they want to modify their buildings? Yes, it certainly would. Um, if uh, after this gets put in place, uh, those existing facilities are uh, bound to the new regulations. So if we were to take it out of a particular zone and make the property non-conforming, there are significant impacts to those facilities. So um, once again, it depends on how the final language is written, but these regulations, we have to be mindful that they will apply to the other facilities in town if they ever wanted to do something. With obviously their grandfather, Peter, and everything that they have right now, there's nothing that we would do that would force them to make changes. Correct. We can't impose, you know, this stuff on them because they're, they're protected by their pre-existing conditions, but if they were to want to do something different in the future, uh, many of these provisions will impact them. Like outside storage, if they wanted to start having a boat yard in the back. <laughs> Correct. Okay. Um, Peter, on the next page on recommendations on page 12. Yeah, so um, just to, really for the purposes of getting the conversation going, I came up with this last page. So 
uh, the first recommendation was would be to continue uh, to allow these in both of the zones that presently allow them, which are the RC and the and the BP zone. Uh, I debated whether we should um, continue to allow them in the BP zone because we have such limited property. Um, and most of the property that I can think of that is BP zoned or is not suitable for this type of use, but to take it out impacts uh, at least one of the facilities uh, going forward. It makes it completely non-conforming. They couldn't do anything uh, in the future. So I uh, decided to stay with, at least for the purposes of this conversation, with both of those zones going forward. Um, just as an aside, what is Metaplex zoned as? Zoned as? Uh, that's B residential. Okay. So that's that's a residential zone, not a commercial zone. So that it could never they could never take it into that under the current zoning if God, not, God forbid. Not, not under the current zoning. That doesn't mean they couldn't try and rezone it, but um, under the current zoning, it would not be permitted there. Okay. You want to just go through these, Pete? Sure. So second um, second provision is continue to requ uh, require a special permit for these uses going forward. A special permit. The important part of that is it gives the commission some discretion but it also requires a public hearing. It requires neighbor notification. Uh, it's a higher standard of permit. So um, when in doubt, uh, we always say, stay with this special permit. It gives, uh, it's more of a public process and it gives the Planning and Zoning Commission a little, little more strength to say yes or no. Okay. And then the um, various other things that we've, kind of talked about is right now we do not have a definition uh, of what these things are, self-storage, so we should really define them in our zoning regulations. Uh, so that's kind of a kind of a no-brainer. Um, most of these places do have uh, management offices and you know some level of uh, sale or they, they sell boxes or things like that, so we should probably include some language that if that's our intent, that should be in the regulation. Um, we do not have a specific parking requirement for these types of businesses. Um, so the Planning and Zoning Commission decides on a case-by-case -case basis, but that, that's a little dangerous. So we should have a specific, these are not high parking uh, demand. <laughs> so it would be a kind of a, a, a lesser category, but we should have a, a specific parking ratio for these types of uh, businesses. Pete, um, does the industry itself, the uh, self-storage industry um, have guidelines? For parking? Yes, and I, I do have those from some other communities. They're pretty consistent, but it, it is a low, it's a low number. So we, if you if you feel feasible, we could just adopt whatever um, the industry language is, if yep. you think it's feasible. Yep, I will fair? do, yep, I would, I would plug that in. Um, number four, which is really an important one, is to establish some very specific architectural design standards for these kinds of things. Um, some of them go as far as to say, you know, 50% of every facade has to have windows, um, you know, certain materials you can't use, uh, or we encourage a high percentage of brick or um, certain uh, fenestration on the facade wall. So those, getting into those kinds of things so that we end up with, you know, some of the, a product similar to the, some of the ones that I saw relatively recently, you'll notice, the one in uh, Milford has a lot of windows uh, and brick. Um, That's the know, lock up. Yeah, yep. so, so you know, that kind of getting in, uh, quantifying that kind of information in the regulation so that the Planning and Zoning Commission and the Design Review has at least uh, some tools to be more specific with these guys um, than we've had. And this, is, this will be kind of a new thing. Our regulations don't have a lot of that right now. So we're getting into a Bit, bit of new territory in terms of regulations, but I think that's based on all of our conversations. That's very important uh, to you guys to make sure we do that. The um, page seven, which had the um, the Ridgefield, I know you said this website wasn't that good, but um, they obviously have some pretty decent design standards there, I would assume, unless the developer just, you know, just provided that and hit it out of the park. Are, are we able, are you able to glom anything from those other towns? I, I, looked, I, I did not look at Ridgefield yet. I looked at Norwalk and I looked at um, Milford and, and quite frankly, I was, um, their regulations for self-storage were pretty much lacking and very silent. 
so they must have other they must have other things um, in their regulations that they latched onto. Um, so I can I can look deeper into both of those towns, but uh, my initial blush it, they didn't have anything special that you know I would borrow. So, uh, okay. but, I, but I can take certainly take another look. What um, what did you usually say that we there was a town around here that had an excessive amount of storage space? Was it Berlin or Newington? Actually, Milford was the other town that that did the moratorium right before we did because they were seeing a lot of these. Um, at the end of the day, they restricted it to one particular zone, um, and everybody seemed to be happy with that final uh, uh, recommendation. Um, but Milford was the town that seemed to be getting uh, overbuilt with them. I just thought there would, might be a town near us that we might be able to get some language from them. I have, I, as I say, I've got language from outside of Connecticut. I haven't found one a town in Connecticut that really has a very, you know, significant regulation for this kind of use. So, uh, but I do have other um, regulations that are much better from other, other places outside of Connecticut. Ours can be the model, we can set the bar. That's, yeah, sure. Peter, in, in, in the memo, you, you talk about um, Rocky Hill and how the Ames site is, is not a permitted site for it. Do you know why? Just the way their regulations are right now in that zone, um, it, it was not one of the permitted uses there. It just happened to be uh, the way uh, the regulations are set up. I don't recall specifically what that zone is called there, but uh, they do allow it in other zones, they're just not in that one. I, I don't think it was intentional, it just the way their regulations were set up originally. Peter, did the board, um, did we have to modify or um, add any language with, with the way the board looks? Um, was there, did they fit within a prescribed um, um, set of restrictions and allowances? Or was there any, did we have to um, mess around with that at all? We rewrote the um, mixed use regulations years before they came into town. Um, it worked for them. Um, so we didn't change anything specifically for them. Uh, the, that existing regulation worked for them. There were some provisions in there that allowed some flexibility that they took advantage of, but it was already in the regulation. Do you guys feel that as a standard, we could maybe cite the Borden, which is the newest construction as kind of a standard on what we're looking for? Is that something that could be, uh, or maybe that's too ephemeral, um, not specific enough? Because um, certainly that looks very nice. Thoughts? I think we have to leave it more broad. I mean, I think it has to fit the neighborhood, but I don't think we can cite a building because five years from now, we might not, agree or people have different opinions of you know what's architecturally pleasing so okay okay as I, as I said before I've got some examples that I think I can show you guys that um, goes you know go, establishes a standard but it's not so rigid that you know it doesn't apply across the board but gets us at the table to talk about design elements how much window you know, uh, area you have, what materials you're using, those kinds of things. So I think that's with, without imposing a particular design standard, uh, because I think all of those three recent examples I provide you all have value in their own different ways. Um, but, you know, the town was obviously able to get to the table to talk about those things so that, you know, it doesn't look like your traditional boxy storage, you know, facility. Um, and requires windows and door treatments and things like that. So I, I'm pretty confident I can come up with something that um, is uh, uh, flexible enough to get us at the table with the, with the design issues that I think you guys want to make sure are addressed. Okay. Hey, uh, um, Mark, it's, it's Paul Thompson. I need to drop. I have to get uh, spun up for two o'clock for work. All right, well, it was, I can't say it was nice seeing you, Paul, but... Um, <laughs> We'll talk to you later. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody. Okay, bye. bye. Mark, I have also have to go. I have a two o'clock appointment. Thank you, Judy. Okay, bye all. Uh, bye. Before you go, um, Peter, 
do or do we have to be in a position where we file a motion to move forward? And if so, we would need a quorum. I, um, I don't think you need to do that today. If you guys are willing to have another meeting, um, whether it's next week or the beginning of the following week, as long as it's before the 24th, I would prefer you to vote on something that's specific, okay. but, uh, you know, rather than just you know, voting in general and assuming that I'm going to come up with the language that you all uh, want. So I would, um, I would want you to vote on or make a motion on something, you know, more finite. Yeah. Yeah. So in essence, I think we agree that we want to continue to permit the use, but with a, a lot more um, specificity on what we, what would go in there. Is that fair? Definitely. Okay. Um, any thoughts on that guys? Mark, my only thought is, is, and I think you know my position on this, is that I would be in favor of a full prohibition in town. That to me, this has never been about building a pretty building. It's really about economic development and how much it doesn't spur other economic development around it, that it just creates a dead space for the most part. So, I mean, and I, I was looking online yesterday or the day before, and the city of Miami did something similar to this three years ago, where, where in, they required... Um, like a mixed use, I don't know all the terminology, but they require a different sort of, you know, facade or mixed use construction when it came to, to uh, storage facilities. And just earlier this year, and that was three years ago, earlier this year, they just passed another 270 day moratorium. So to me, it's not about building a pretty building that helps, but it's really about just creating a dead space really in the middle of, of, of our um, Weathersfield's front door, you know, I, I live really close to the extra space storage. To me, that building doesn't look that bad, but it's just dead. You know, it's just a dead building with an empty parking lot almost all the time. And, and, and the other thing, you know, that I would be worried about is that it seems like, you know, if, if you're talking about specific properties in town where this may or may not be, uh, where a developer may be interested in it, that, that going forward, we may, I, and I raised this issue the last time, it feels like we might be almost partnering in a development as long as it meets certain, you know, like if it's, if it's, you know, if you have a couple of stores in the front or a couple of restaurants in the front. And then, you know, especially with, with the money that we have hanging out there for some environmental remediation or, or property remediation, I just think going down the road that um, I'm just not, I'm, I'm just not comfortable with, with uh, just building another storage facility in town. I was very excited. It wasn't my idea. I think it was your idea or somebody's idea to take a pause, but I fell in love with the idea. And especially since when you, you have positive uh, articles written about the town that it makes us look progressive. It makes us look like we're thinking forward that just, you know, if, if this pandemic has taught us anything, well, it's taught us a few things, but Number one, I think it teaches us, it's taught us that, that we're just, we're a consumer economy. We're spending too much money on too much stuff and we have too much stuff and when we don't run out of space, we have to put it somewhere. But the other thing it's taught us is that I think with the way that the, the um, and I know businesses are going through this right now with a lot of people working from home or not working from a traditional office space that more and more and more people are gonna choose to live in a community based on what that community looks like and what it feels like and what it's like to live there rather than that they have to live somewhere because it's close to their office. And every sort of decision that we're making from either an economic development point of view or a planning point of view has to keep that in mind that we need to start really thinking about what we want our town to look and feel like. And when you're driving down the Silestine Highway, what kind of, what kind of impression do you wanna make for the rest of the town? Um, it helps if you have a nicer looking space I don't want an empty 20 year old Weight Watchers building, you know, with a spray painted cell phone number on the front of it any more than you do. But I, I, I just feel like we may be settling a little bit. Um, and, and as far as the Silestine Highway is concerned, I'm concerned about that spot. I'm concerned about Rite Aid. I'm concerned about a few other things that, that um, you know, I just wanted to go on the record with that. I don't have a lot of support for that position, but I just wanted to say that that's, that's sort of where I'm coming from. Well, um, I think that you use the word settling, um, and I won't dispute that, Tom. Um, I think if there was, um, if there were people parachuting down to that property with all kinds of great ideas to put in there, 
I think there might be, um, and you're right, I was the one that initially thought that we should put a, a, the brakes on this and just kind of get a, our arms around it. I think it probably, you could call it subtle, or maybe you, the way I'm viewing it is that it's, we're, we're trying to find a hybrid solution on a property that's been vacant for so long uh, where there is legitimate interest. And if we can kind of get, I would love for it to be all mixed use, residential and retail, and somebody come in and just with a, with a great vision, I would love that. But I think if we could get it, half of it in that direction, especially one that faces the Southstein Highway, um, we get, it is, is it a settle? In my opinion, I, I would agree with you. I think it is um, a settle, but I think we have to kind of work with what we have out there um, and right now, it's we're not getting anything out of it. Um, so that's true. But I, I also think that that you can give it another year or two to see what happens with the boarding because I don't know how rentals are going in that building, but it's just opening up. And and a year from now, it may excite other developers. And I go back to something Tom said in our previous meeting that that he says he doesn't believe that site's ever been properly marketed. You know, and I I think that's probably the case too. I mean. I, even that the Pet Supplies Plus building, that's going to be the tough shed now on the Berlin Turnpike. They had aerial views, they had neighbors, they had traffic counts, they had all this stuff like when they were marketing the property. And, and if, if, if he believes, I mean, I'm not a real estate expert, but if he believes that that property has never been properly marketed, that's another thing we have to consider, that, that um, we, we, we have an owner that, that might not necessarily know what he's doing in, term, in, in, you know, in, in terms of getting the best value for his money, but also in terms of building a project that, that our town, you know, would, would be proud of. So, so going back, it's like, I'd love to give the, listen, I know everything in the economy is changing in a year from now. I don't know what we're going to be looking at, mm. but, but you can give the board a chance, you know, and if, 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 if it's 50% vacant a year from now, you know, maybe, you know, then, then that no one else is going to want to go in, but if it's hundred percent vacant, there might be a developer says, Hey, there's a reason why there are people living there. So. Okay. Um, anything else to add, Mr. Carson? No, not yet. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Thanks. Um, I think the I think the most important thing here is uh, I I think I, I, may, I may have said this before and I apologize. If we're all sitting around trying to order a pizza right now, by the time we're done, we'd end up with um, plain cheese, and then somebody would have a an issue um, with dairy. And we would just have sauce and some would be allergic to tomatoes. Then we have the crust left and it, the somebody's gluten free. So we don't even have a pizza. So it, I, I agree that we're never going to find the perfect mix for it. What we do have right now is Mojo from the owner of the property who has been engaged with us pretty significantly the last month where we have not been able to bring him to the table to get motivation there. I wish we had a crystal ball. Uh, where you can kind of see what the future holds, but mine doesn't work. <laughs> um, it works 50% of the time. Um, so um, I think at this point, I think the group uh, kind of um, is comfortable with the idea of Peter, you putting um, together, tightening up those definitions um, and, and giving us something to look at. Um, and, and then if it's something that we're comfortable with, we would uh, get to a vote on. Um, is that fair? Okay. Any other questions or comments or stuff that we can we can share while we're together here as a group? Mr. Evans, do you have anything to share? Um, I mean, I, I'm joining an hour late, so uh, I'd, I'd hate to try to add something without necessarily knowing what you went through. I'll catch up with Peter afterwards um, and try to get a better understanding. And I apologize. I was double booked for meetings and just coming back from vacation, it's kind of like a line of people waiting for me. I get it. It's the Gary Evans deli. Um, all right. <laughs> well, everybody take a number. Um, guys, thank you for your time. I've got nothing else to add. Anybody have anything else to add? If not, we will uh, adjourn. Peace and love, man. Peace and love. Adios. Take it easy. Okay. Bye. Bye.